Now that we've gotten the bottom end back together and gotten all the bolts finger tight, um, we can set aside for a couple hours to let the RTV set. While it sets, um, we're going to use a ball hone to um, smooth out some minor scoring in the cylinder. Um, this is the rear cylinder. Um, I imagine that in the application this engine came from, it was not getting adequate cooling um, because the back cylinders are notorious for um, having cooling issues. I'm back with the new piston. Um, it is Teflon coated, as you can see, that's this black coating. Um, that helps prevent um, huge heat absorption into the piston, which can cause cracks. Um, like I talked about earlier, that's what happens when you uh, overheat a two-stroke. But um, this will help um, with heating and will also help with um, wear on the cylinder. Um, I've got this to test the fit in the cylinder. Um, I do not have the rings on. I'm just checking for a snug fit. Okay, now that um, we got the cylinder honed out, um, I'm going to give the case halves a little bit more time to set um, and rebuild the fuel bunk. Um, I got this kit. It's just the diaphragms um, and gaskets. I got it off eBay, it was like 10 bucks. This is a fairly simple project. Um, I even did it at Oshkosh one year. Um, one of my buddies was flying a, a uh, two place white sport. Um, and he was running a 582 with a McCooney diaphragm pump. And we were up in the pattern um, down on the ultralight end and it started sputtering. Um, we did manage to get it back to the field. Um, and upon further inspection, the fuel pump diaphragm had just dry rotted because it had been sitting too long. Um, so not gonna take any chances. Gonna put new diaphragms and gaskets in my pump. So this is where your pulse line connects. Um, there's a barb inside of the case um, that runs here. And as the pistons move up and down, it's creating an oscillating um, pulse of air that just runs the diaphragm in this pump. Um, you can see there's some corrosion in here um, and a little bit of residue from the old gasket. Um, I'll just clean that up with a um, brass wire brush um, and yeah, look at that. That's pretty nasty. Um, I did have this apart already and get rid of the gaskets, but you can see there's gas gummed up in there and a uh, little bit of corrosion in here just from having a little bit of gas or um, fogging oil left in it. Um, so I'm gonna clean out all these passages and throw the new diaphragms in. Now I've got mm, all of the residue from the old gasket off um, of the top and the bottom. Um, and I've cleaned out all the sludge um, in all the fuel valleys. Um, so now we're ready to put it back together. Um, first you're gonna put the thinnest gasket. Um, make sure you get this on the right way. There is a correct way and it will not work the other way. So put the thinnest one first, it's one way black, um, and then the clear gasket. Make sure they're all the right way. 
and then your last gasket is the thickest and it's made out of what you normally consider gasket material. See, that's the wrong way. <laughs> and then put your top back on. Um, there are pins that help you align it. Um, and if they don't line up or if it sticks off to one end a little bit more, um, just flip it around. Let's see, if it sticks over like that, you have it on um, facing the wrong way. So just pull it back off. Uh, I guess my gaskets came with it. So I'm gonna flip these around on here. And then place it back down on the right way. Now you can just take your four Phillips screws and tighten them up. And that's it. You just want them snug. You don't want to tighten them down too much because um, you can strip the aluminum out in the pump housing. Okay, so the fuel pump's done. Um, like I said earlier, I did end up leaving the case halves overnight to let the RTV dry. You can see that we did get a little bit um, that squeezed out. Um, that's what you want. You don't want, you want to have enough that it will squeeze out. And that's easy to fix up. You can cut it off with a razor blade or um, just peel it off. Now, um, we're ready to put the front and rear seals in. Um, those also came in your gasket set. So the bigger one will go at the rear of the case and the smaller one will go in the front. Um, before you put these in, you want to check um, in the front. Um, you may have a little bit of RTV that's squeezed out. Just go ahead and take a X-Acto blade um, or just a razor blade and trim that off so you get a good clean fit for the seal um, against the cases. And same thing on the back. Okay, before we're ready to put the seals in, um, we're going to torque down all the bolts um, holding the case halves together. So I've got my torque wrench, um, a three inch extension, and a 13 millimeter socket. Um, that'll do all the M8 bolts. We're going to tighten them down to um, 24 newton meters or 210 inch pounds. And then the M6 bolts will be tightened to 10 newton meters or 88 foot pounds. It helps if you lay the case sideways um, so that you're pushing against the leverage that it has. There we go. There we go.
You don't have to tighten them down in a star pattern, but as a general rule, I do it for everything so that I don't forget on things that it's important. There we go. Now we're going to take our inch pounds torque wrench, um, have a little adapter here, quarter inch to three eighths, and our 10 millimeter. Um, and we're going to crank the M6 bolts down to 88 inch pounds. Or 10 newton meters. My wrench only goes up to nine um, newton meters, so I'm going to tighten it to nine and then do a little bit more to where I guess that 10 might be. It's not critical, but it's good for them to be tight. And they're not very tight. It's good to use a torque wrench because these bolts are a lot more loose than you'd expect. Last one. Oh, wrong way. All the way up to nine and a little bit past. Here we go. So again, the M8 or the bigger bolts will be tightened down to 24 newton meters and the smaller ones down to 10. Um, now I can put our seals in and begin to put the ignition in. You can just set it up there. It will wiggle um, until it seats, um, but from then you're good. Just make sure you got all the rubber off of the seal surface. Um, I'm just gonna use this little screwdriver to get a little piece in the corner. Make sure you don't get it dropped down in that bearing. Okay, um, I'm gonna take a little bit of motor oil and put it along the inside of the case um, and on the outside of the crankshaft just to keep the seal um, lubed up until we run it for the first time. Make sure that um, your bearing seat is clean um, and the place on your crankshaft where the seat is going to sit. It will be a tight fit. Um, so you can take a big sprocket and place it over the outside um, and tap it down. Or if you're gentle, you can just do small taps around the outside until it's fully seated. You only want to um, press it in until it's flush with this face of the case, um, but you don't want it to be down inside the case. Um, but you do want it flush because your gearbox will sit on here.